In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to fix patchy skin using a combination of Capture One Pro and Adobe Photoshop. Hello, hello, Michael Voloshnevich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me at vibrantshot.com as well as via the social media links below. So in this tutorial, we're going to be dealing with a fairly common problem that I see uh, posted a lot on forums and also I get a lot of questions about it. And that is how to deal with patchy skin on legs and arms. And you know, this is a particularly common problem around the winter months where there's temperature variances in the studio and these sort of, um, you know, skin things can come out uh, a little bit more so than they do in the summertime. So as retouchers, obviously we have to deal with this and the traditional way to do that is to use dodging and burning and some sort of color correction in combination with it. So if we look at this image here, this is the source image we're going to use. It was sent to me by Kevin White and I'm going to post um, a link to his portfolio down in the description of this video if you want to check out more of his work. Um, really cool shot and it's a kind of a good basis for treating this problem because it's obviously, you know, fairly well defined here. Uh, so what we can do is let's go ahead and look at our background layer and take off all the saturation for this image. So if we do that, we can see there really is a luminosity based problem. Uh, essentially, some areas are lighter and some areas are darker. So the traditional way we deal with luminosity based problems is always dodging and burning. So we will burn anything that is too light, like for example, this area here, we would burn it. Anything that is too dark, like these patches here, we would dodge it. And then we would clip to our layer masks uh, for the dodging and burning some sort of hue saturation adjustment to make the final correction. Now that is really sort of the ideal way to do it in the sense that it will give you the best result in the end. But sometimes we just need to expedite things a little bit and speed up the process and find kind of a solution that is, you know, maybe 75% as good, but just a lot quicker. So in order to do that, we're going to use Capture One Pro and we're going to kind of have it do some of the work for us and then we're going to finish off in Photoshop uh, using dodging and burning. So I'll show you both steps. So starting off, um, we're going to go ahead and mask in uh, each leg. So I've done that for the right leg. It's her left leg, but it's screen right. Uh, so I'm going to show you the actual masking of the well, her right leg and our left hand side. Uh, obviously the masking is the same for both legs. So just trying to save a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. You can do this, by the way, on Capture One 9 and 10 as well. I'm using version 11. The only reason I'm showing this to you in 11 is because they've enhanced some of the layer masking tools that they have uh, available to you. So it's actually going to make it a little bit easier for us to make a nice clean mask. But for this particular case, you don't actually need those tools. The actual tool for doing uh, the matching of the skin is available in 9 and 10 as well. So you can do it there and I'll note uh, what the difference is between 9 and 10 as we're going through this. So let's go ahead and label this left. I'm going to click B for our brush and M to reveal our mask. So if we start painting now, you should see the actual mask. And this is sort of the size that I want, I think, for creating an outline of the leg. Uh, you can adjust that over here by changing the size and also just make sure that your hardness is set to zero. Opacity is 100, flow is 100, and you've got auto mask uh, enabled. The auto mask, basically, if I just kind of go beyond uh, the leg, it will try to clean that up automatically. It, it kind of works, it kind of doesn't, but you will see um, one of the new tools introduced in Capture 111 that will kind of help to fix that for us in the end. So let's go ahead and start by just kind of painting this in. You don't have to be 100% perfect. Particularly in this image, we don't have to be perfect because uh, we're selecting a skin tone and there's nothing really around that matches a skin tone. We've got, you know, this blue bodysuit she's got on and then we've got a white background. So, um, you know, it really doesn't have to be a perfect selection by any means. And that's why, I mean, you don't have to have 11, um, which will help to make this a perfect selection, but you don't need it. So we're going to just kind of cover off those areas a little bit there. Perfect. Now we can go into this little uh, three dot uh, option drop down here and just select fill mask. That'll just fill that in for us. And we can see that, you know, the mask isn't quite perfect. Now, if you're using nine and 10, you can stop here. It really doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, it'll still work for you just as well. If you've had like an orange background or a red background, it could be a problem because obviously skin tones are orange and red. So it would select and spill into the background. Now in our case, we'll just clean it up because it's super easy to do. Uh, with 11, you've got this refine mask tool. So you can go in here and just kind of play with your slider until it creates a nice clean mask for you. Somewhere in and around there. Click apply and there is our mask done. 
So we can go ahead and turn that off. If you want to look at the right leg, it's exactly the same thing. I took the exact same steps. And let's go ahead and actually do the correction. So for that, we're going to go into our, our color tab here. And we're going to select this little eyedropper. And we're going to pick a tone that is kind of the, you know, the tone that we want to have within our leg. And I think that is somewhere, you know, in and around here, this nice kind of creamy tone. It's not too red, not too saturated. So just pick that. And then we're going to go down into our uniformity tools here. And obviously we showed that this is primarily a luminosity based problem. And so for that, we can use the lightness slider and we're basically going to crank that to about 100%. And that's going to help to eliminate some of those problems there. The next thing we're going to do is try and fix some of the saturation shifts that we have in here as well. So we'll maybe push that to around there. And then hue as well, we can kind of match everything up. So something like that. Then we're going to do the same thing for the other leg. Now, if we toggle this on and off, you can see the difference as far as, you know, how it deals with the patches. One thing you will notice is that in fixing some of the luminosity shifts we don't want, we have lost some of the luminosity shifts that we do want. So those are things like uh, the contours within the leg here. Um, there's a little bit of contouring inside the thigh here where the muscle is. So some of that has been lost. And what we can basically do is recover that using contouring, dodging and burning in Photoshop afterwards. Essentially, we just need to spend, you know, maybe 30 seconds adding a bit of contouring to this to bring some of that dimension back. Uh, it does a good job of retaining the skin texture so you won't actually lose any skin texture in this but again just kind of be aware of the fact that you will lose a little bit of that depth and dimension in this process and that's why i say you know the perfect solution is to not do any of this do everything with dodging and burning and then it will be perfect however it will take much longer so it's that trade-off of whether you need to you know have something that's very fast or you need to have something that's perfect and so that's why i'm I'm going to show you the, the dodging and burning portion of it, and that will kind of show you how you would dodge and burn it as well, because it's really just an extension of that. You just do a lot more of the dodging and burning if you didn't do this step first. So now we're going to go in the other leg, and we're going to do basically the exact same thing. We're going to grab our eyedropper, pick a good tone somewhere here, and once again, we're going to crank up this uniformity here. This leg is not as bad as the other one, so we don't have to push it as far, maybe somewhere in around there match up our saturation as well so something similar and then our hue also and then one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to try and match up the two legs so that the tones within them are the same as well so we can do a couple of shifts here i think this leg needs a little bit more sort of magenta tone so maybe we'll push that to around there and um, perhaps we need to desaturate things a little bit here find that it's a little more saturated than the upper body so let's just maybe take that down to there and then lastly let's just match up some of our luminosities here so I think luminosity is actually pretty good maybe just darken it slightly and we can go into the right leg do the same thing just maybe desaturate it a bit because I find that it is a lot more saturated than uh, the upper body so something like that and then lastly hue Let's just maybe push it a little bit this way so that it's a little more kind of creamy here. Something around there should be good. And now before I take this into Photoshop, one other thing I would do is probably select out the arms. You can see that there are, uh, you know, a few little patches here and uh, some areas of the arms are a lot more red than the rest of the arms. So I've done that in this version of the file here. I've created one more mask for the arms using the exact same uh, technique that we used on the legs. So we can look at that mask there. And that sort of completes our steps within Capture One. And we can look at it as a sort of before and after. That's before, that's after our adjustments. So everything is nicely matched up now and we're ready to take it into Photoshop. So now we're ready to go ahead with the actual dodging and burning step of this process. So like I said, you know, there is still a little bit of dodging and burning at the end to make this look perfect, but it's a lot less than we would have to do if we didn't do the step inside of Capture One. So this is the original file out of Capture One. Uh, sorry, before Capture One, and this is the file after we've done those adjustments in Capture One. And I've just actually filled in the background a little bit here as well, so that we don't have anything distracting um, in this particular image. So it just looks nice and clean. Uh, now, if we do our dodging and burning correctly, we should end up with something like this. And the time for that was exactly 10 minutes. Uh, I will show you a time lapse of that dodge and burn, but I'll show you a little bit of the process for doing it um, just to kind of get you started. So we're gonna go into this uh, image here. So like I said, this is what came out of Capture One after we did 
the uniformity adjustments, and we're going to build up a stack for doing our dodging and burning here. And if you've seen my uh, Master Dodging and Burning course on Retouching Academy, you will be very familiar with this. I'll put the link to that uh, course up here in the corner, so you can check it out if you haven't seen it. And if you're obviously new to dodging and burning, essentially it's the process of lightening and darkening certain areas. So if we look at this layer here, it's just a curves adjustment that has been cranked up so that it makes things brighter. And this one is making things darker. So it's just, you know, a curves adjustment with a black layer mask on it. And we're going to paint white to reveal that layer mask. So we're going to lighten and darken that way. And in this stack, I've got a couple of different variations of this layer. So this one is a little bit stronger, uh, this strong block, and these ones are a little bit weaker. For something like this, I'm going to use the strong section because we want to kind of quickly get through things. And then um, we're going to finish by contouring it. So we're going to try and recover some of that lost depth and dimension through the contouring step, which will also be in the time lapse. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to make sure we got our brush selected. We're going to go to about a 3% flow rate, nice soft brush. And we're going to go in and just start painting here. So we can zoom in. I'm actually going to darken my helper here. And this helper layer basically just makes things black and white so I can see things better. And I'm just going to darken this so I can see that a bit better also. And then we're going to grab our dodge layer to start here. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I can start with burn and make sure that we're painting with white. And then I can just go into these areas and start painting anything that is, in my opinion, too bright. I'm going to paint it a little bit darker, like so. And then I just kind of jump around so I can go into my lighter one. Let's let's just look at this area here. Oh, still on the wrong layer. There we go. Let's go into this area because I think it's the most noticeable one. So basically, as you can see, I'm just kind of painting over those patches that I think are too dark until I find that they are matching up with the rest of the skin. As you can see, I mean, this is not a terribly difficult process. It just takes time. And, you know, thanks to Capture One, we've minimized that time. You know, 10 minutes spent dodging and burning, this is not too bad. It would probably take a lot longer without that Capture One step. And considering that, you know, your average retouch probably takes about an hour for a good retouch, maybe half an hour for something that's quick, um, 10 minutes on this problem is not really the end of the world. So that's kind of the idea. We're going to keep iterating through that and I will show you a time lapse of that whole process and we're going to get eventually to this result here. So I hope you found that useful. Like I said, at the end of this whole thing, I have uh, added some contouring. And if you want to look at the mask, it's basically just a quick mask around. And that contouring is really just adding back some of that depth and dimension for us. And then we can maybe, maybe that's a little bit too strong. We can just kind of back it off a little bit to something like 75%, just to make it a little more subtle. And obviously we would have to finish dodging and burning the rest of this. There's some areas in the upper body. I only did a little bit of dodging and burning there. Um, to make things a little bit more clean, but realistically as a total dodge and burn time something along the lines of 15 to 20 minutes would be reasonable for this image to get us to something that is clean and finalized and then obviously we would add in uh, any sort of color grading and other corrections that we want to make. So I hope you found that uh, tutorial useful. Uh, be sure to try that out, especially if you already have Capture One, you've got all the tools available to you. If you don't have Capture One, I highly recommend it. It really is an excellent 
raw processing tool. So um, get the trial off their website, try it out. Um, you know, there's a lot of situations just like this one where those uniformity tools become really, really handy. And also make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below so that you get future updates just like this one. Bye for now.